All right, here we are again for part two. So let's go to this next problem. So uh, let's see here. We have this uh, L bracket here, this L angle, and we say determine the reactions at A and C when A alpha is zero degrees and B alpha is 30 degrees. Hmm. Okay, so let's figure that out. So the first case, let's do the first case. A, so this alpha here, alpha, or that is not an alpha, that is a C. Alpha equals 30 degrees. Alpha is 30, or sorry, alpha, alpha is zero degrees. Derp. Alpha is zero degrees. So let me draw a free body diagram here. And what this problem is trying to illustrate is that the um, reaction on a roller support will always be perpendicular to the surface. That's what this problem is trying to illustrate, really. So one alpha is zero degrees. And let's say, I'm just going to have a Y here in the vertical direction. Then I'm going to have um, CX and CY. Now, uh, note, on here, I always draw my reactions with the uh, the x reactions pointing to the right and the the vertical reactions pointing pointing upward. Um, now I can look at this and clearly say, oh, this is definitely going to be going. This reaction has to be going to the left. That's what's going to need to be. That's what's going to need to happen in order in order to stabilize this. However, generally what I do is I simply say um, I simply draw everything to the right and upward. And then if I get a negative number for my reaction, I know it's pointing in the opposite direction. So this will then be 300 newtons. And another 300 newton force. And then we'll have some distances as shown above. Let me, I'll just go ahead and put these in meters. 0.2 meters, 0.2 meters, and 0.8 meters. Zero point eight meters. Like so. Alright, now the first thing I'm gonna do is get the X force. That's gonna be fairly easy. Sum of forces in the X direction. We'll we'll have CX plus 300 newtons times 2 equals 0. So Cx must be equal to negative 600 newtons. Or I could also report this as 600 newtons to the left. Now, I could do a sum of forces y right now, but I'd rather, I would rather not. Because if I just do a sum of forces in the vertical direction, I will get, to, I'll, I'll have both the AY and the CY there, and that's going to be something I don't want to work with, because I'm going to have two unknowns there, it's going to get messy. I try to avoid that if I can. So instead, I think I might do a sum of moments about, um, say, C. Sum of moments about C. Why did I choose that? Okay, actually, let me move this a bit further over here. Some of moments about C. So the, you might ask, why did I pick C? The reason for that is by putting my, my sum of moment point here, by summing moments about here, I will eliminate both the CY and the CX from that equation. So that's going to make my uh, work a little bit simpler. So I'll have um, AY, well, this is going to generate a negative moment, negative AY times a perpendicular distance or a moment arm length of 0 0.8 meters. <clears throat> plus 300 newtons times a distance of 0.2 meters 
0.2 meters plus 300 newtons times 0.4 meters. All of this equals zero. And then I'll have 0 0.8 AY, or negative 0 0.88Y, plus, let me just combine all those, 300 times 0 0.2 plus 300 times 0 0.4, plus 180 equals 0. And from this, I get that AY is equal to uh, 225 newtons. 225 newtons. And then, so I have a y, and then finally I can simply say sum of forces in the y direction is going to be equal to cy plus a y equals zero, um, cy plus 225 equals zero, cy, this is my answer, one answer. Um, this is an answer, and finally, CY equals negative 225. Um, CX 60. Oh, let's see, CX 60. CX. No, this isn't. This isn't a moment arm. This is. I'm saying there's two 300 newton forces. The question was, isn't isn't this point two? No, that's not, for once that's not a typo on my part, or or a pen o. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> pen o. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, can, uh, you got this? Oh. Um. Okay. This here is just negative point eight here. Uh, or, or why is it negative? Ah, see the force here is generating a clockwise moment about point C. I'm summing moments about point C. It's, gen it's causing clockwise rotation, so that's going to be a negative moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just duplicate the slide, and then um, I'm going to duplicate the slide and then do it again, but for part B. So I'm going to, I still have the work here. I'm just going to delete this one. Yep, I didn't use it because uh, in, I didn't use alpha. The question was, I didn't use alpha. And the reason was, was because when alpha is zero, this is just a purely vertical force. Now, in this next one, we actually will need to use alpha. So this one, we actually will need to use alpha. All right, so we want to do this. We want to figure this out when this is uh, 30 degrees. So here, I'm just going to kind of let this be my free body diagram up here. I'm going to be lazy and just write my free body diagram up here. So the same CX, well, it won't be the same value, but the same force anyway. CY, these, this is the same. However, now I have this. Ah, I now have A. I have this force A. And some of it is going to be in the x, some of this is going to be x, and some of it's going to be y. Hmm. How do we handle that? Well, this is a normal force, right? So what we're going to have, this is 30 degrees. And this is going to have components. This is going to be a sine 30, right? This is going to be a sine 30 degrees. So the horizontal component is going to be a sine 30 degrees, and the vertical component will be a cosine 30 degrees. And that just comes from trigonometry. You may have remembered doing that in physics with the uh, old block on the ramp. It's the same. It's actually the same thing. Um, but anyway, we could work through the trig, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad to work through. But I think you can figure that out. Okay, 
so um, I'm going to find, uh, next I'm going to solve for the, um, I'm going to start by balancing moments about C again. I'm going to start by summing moments about C, and so I'll have 300 newtons. You know what, actually I'm going to be a little bit more creative. It's a dangerous thing. So in the previous one, I actually broke it down and had 300 newtons times 200 mill millimeters plus 300 newtons times four, uh, 400, right? Check this out. Four hundred newtons times zero point three meters. Basically, what I'm doing in this calculation is I am deliberately just. This is not necessary. I'm just showing you a cool trick. Um, I am combining these together and putting them at their centroid. Hmm. You see that this force and this force, uh, they're they're equal. So they have equal magnitudes. So therefore, they're going to. They're. Um, if I were to find a weighted average of their location, it would be three hundred millimeters from the top, right? It'd be halfway between them. So I'm, I'm, I'm essentially replacing them with a um, with a 600 newton force halfway between them. Now, yes, this is completely optional. I just thought it was kind of cool to demonstrate that technique. You could just as easily do it with two, just like we. You could just as easily do it using the same math as before. I just thought I'd mix it up a bit. So then, um, let me let me say we have okay. This one, the x the, or the y component is going to generate a negative moment. So minus a cosine 30 degrees. And then, oh, times uh, 0 0.8 meters, or yeah, times 0 0.8 meters. 0 0.8 meters for the vertical component. And then the horizontal component, however, is actually going to generate a positive moment plus um, a sine 30 degrees times uh, 0 0.4 meters. And all of this is equal to 0, of course. And now the rest is just math. Um, 600 times 0.3 is 180 again. I should have remembered that. Uh, 108 Newton meters. Okay, um, let's see, cosine 30 times 0.8, um, let's see, so then minus 0.693a, and 0.2 of course, plus 0.2 times a equals 0. And then um, let's just say negative 0.493a equals negative 180. And a, the force at a, the overall force at a, is equal to 180 over, let's see, uh, negative, this minus 0.2 and 180 over this is the force at a is 360.25 newtons. Oh, sorry, 365 derp. Yeah, I got the same thing in my calculator. I just didn't write it correctly. 365.25, sorry. Point two five newtons. Ooh, I could do this. I could write in white. We could be all, uh, we, I could make it all like uh, gothic. Okay, I thought that my notes went away. I was concerned for a moment. Okay, um, anyway, so I could do that. Uh, now, uh, let me just say, let me just, get, let me just go ahead and get the X and Y components so I can use those for later. AX is going to be A times sine 30 which is just this over 2. So 182, or 182, not 180, yeah. 182.6 newtons. And AY 
is a cosine 30, which is times cosine 30, which is 316.3 newtons. 316.3 newtons. Now, um, if I want to get these, do you want me to get CX and CY, or is it pretty obvious how to get them at this point? Um, either way is fine. Either way is fine. Okay, uh, do you want me to find CX and CY or you think you got that? You want me to, you want me to find CX and CY? Or do you want, well, what do you, give me some direction. Okay, fine. Let's get CX and CY, fine. Huh? How did I what? Um, it's a trig thing. It's one of those things from physics class. Uh, now, off the top of my head, I remember that the that a um, that a perpendicular component like normal force or gravity can be divided like that. But um, like the actually, wait a minute. Did I get that wrong? I hope I didn't. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we could we could work through the trig. Let's see. Let's see. How can we look at that? We would have to play with the trig a bit. So let's see here. Um, so here's A. This is at a right angle. And this is a right angle, right? And this is 30 degrees, right? That's 30 degrees. And I want, what ultimately I want is like, let me get try to get this angle here, right? So if this is 30, these angles are equal and opposite, right? And so this is therefore uh, 60 degrees. So the cosine of 60 is the same as the sine of 30, basically. It's just working through the trade, basically. Okay, so sum of forces in the x direction. You had me worried there, I thought I got it wrong. I was like, uh oh, that ain't good. Okay. Um, the sum of forces in the x direction is going to simply be um, a sine 30 degrees um, plus cx. Uh, then we'll say plus cx and then plus 300 equals zero. So cx is going to be negative 300 minus a sine 30. Oh, sorry, yes, or, or, yeah, 600, sorry about that. That was always 600. Oh, let me just erase those, those look terrible. Huh? Uh, so that's going to be plus 600, uh, negative 600 minus A sine 30 equals negative 600 times, uh, or just the A, this is just the A uh, X here. Um, minus the 182. So, oh, not times, minus. Negative 783. Negative 783 newtons. And then finally, sum of forces in the y direction is going to be CY plus AY, the y component, is just going to be, um, let's see, that'll get, that'll lead us to um, make that more of an arrow. A y uh, equals negative or negative a y equals c y. So c y equals negative 316.3 newtons. So the reactions at c will be to the uh, will be downward and to the left, and that's what we can see from our negative signs. Questions on that? The moment at C, are you okay with the, is it that you're not okay with any of it or you're just not okay with this part? No, I'm not okay with the reaction that you that. Okay, you can always, when you're when you're finding reactions, you can always place um, forces 
with equivalent forces at their centers. So if I had, or at their centroid, we'll learn how to calculate centroids more in the future. But if I had two forces here, this one and this one, I can combine them together into one force for the purposes of calculating moments. Okay? That's all I did. Look here. This is, I have a 300 newton force and a 300 newton force. Together they come to 600 newtons and their average location is halfway between. Exactly, I'm just kind of averaging them. And if you want, if you had unequal forces, you could do like a weighted average between them. Okay, good move on. All right, here, here's another one. Hmm, this one's a fun one. Neglecting friction and the radius of the pulley, determine A, the tension in cable ADB, and B, the reaction at C. Now, at first, you might be tempted to say, oh, hey, this is just like that crane problem. We can ignore the tension. <laughs> nope, we can't. Not in this one. And the reason because the reason is is because this actually can react against something. This, this tension, this cable is able to react against the pulley, so we can't immediately just rule it out. It's not, um, it's not the ship with the fan on it. It's now something different. Okay. So let's do that then. However, it will be the same force. So I'm just going to call this force T for tension. I'm just going to make this kind of my free body diagram. I have a tension T here and another tension T here. Now I will need to be mindful of the, um, of the dimensions on here. So I'm going to put a little force triangle on here, and I'm going to use the force triangle method to get the components of these, to get the components of this. So this is going to be, um, oh, let's see, um, this looks like 200 plus 160, so 360 in the X, and 150 in the Y. And then to get the hypotenuse, we just use the old, good old, our, our good old friend, the Pythagorean theorem. Um, 150 squared plus 360 squared. And this comes to exactly 390. I wonder if this reduces. Hmm. Actually, yeah, it does. This is equivalent to one of our triangles. This is a 13, 5... 12 triangle, isn't it? Hmm. It's a special triangle. Cool. According to certain definitions of cool. And this one here is, um, let's see. Well, this, oh, I see what this is. This is three times, this is like a multiple, this is like three and four. This is a three, four, five triangle. Ah. All that matters here is the ratios. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And this will then be, we'll have Cx, and then Cy. Now I could find the reactions here, but it's not asking for that, so I'm going to be lazy and ignore them. That, though, that, the, uh, I cannot talk today. It's, it's clearly Thursday, last day of the week, and I cannot talk. Um, this will have a reaction, but this reaction is baked into the tensions um, here and here. All right. Now, it would be now what would be really fun is if they were asking us to not ignore the radius or the, of the pulley or the friction. Then we'd have all sorts of fun. But let's not worry about that. For the sake of our sanity, well, your sanity. I think mine's long gone, so that's okay. Uh, okay. So here's what I'm going to do: the sum of moments about C. I think that's going to do the most to. Um, I think that's going to do the most to eliminate as many uh, components as possible. See, each of these, uh, the tension, each of the tensions here, are going to have an x and a y component. However, the x component uh, is not going to generate a moment about c. The x component of this bra of the of the tension force on here, the vector of that passes right through point c, so will not generate a moment about c. So I only need to consider the y component when I find the moment about C of these tension forces. <clears throat> so 
So this is going to be negative t. Now to get the vertical component, I'm just going to simply say, oh, negative t times 5 over 13. Hmm. Just, it's just the old triangle method we've talked about, where you have a, you just multiply the 5, the, the height of the triangle, over the hypotenuse. This, this is basically, um, let me annotate this a little bit. Actually, let me finish it out, and then I'll annotate it. Um, times the moment arm length here of um, 3.6, or not 3.6, 0.36. Times 0.36 meters. Um, let's say then, plus 120 newtons times a moment arm length of 0.28 meters. Then minus t times 3 over 5 times a moment arm length of 0 0.2 meters. And all of this is equal to 0. Let me annotate this a little bit. This is ty upper upper chord. This just to there is the ty of the lower chord. Okay, then I keep working through that. So this is going to become an ugly decimal very quickly, and that's okay. So five over thirteen times 0.36 um, plus 3 over 5 times 0.2 and I get negative 0 0.258 T plus 120 times 2.8 or 0.28 plus 33.6 equals 0 and this leads us to that T is equal to 130 newtons, exactly. So we have now completed part A. Is that the tension in both cables? The question was, is that the tension in both cables? Yes, it is. That is the tension in both cables. It, because it's one cable, yes. If this, uh, if this wasn't a pulley, if this was just a point that it just stopped at and two cables attached to it, it wouldn't necessarily have to just have the same force. But because it's a pulley, if one is pulling stronger than the other, then it'll, it'll distribute the force. Now, in reality, if there were any kind of pulley friction, there would be slightly different forces in each rope, but it tells it's telling us to ignore that, and so we will. Okay. Questions on that? Those are just using the triangle method to get the um, the y components of the tension. See. Um, well, I, the, in order to get the moment, I need to use the y component. Because basically, this is just the, uh, the the 5 over 13 is basically just the cosine of the, or just, is it basically just the sine of the angle. Instead of, I, I mean, I could go and actually use trigonometry and actually get the angle, find this theta, find this theta, then do a bunch of sines and cosines, or I can just keep from doing a bunch of work, about, uh, or, or, or I can just keep from duplicating my own work and simply say, oh, it's just 5 over 13, or 12 over 13. I don't need to actually calculate the angle. I can just directly use the trigonometric ratios when I already know the dimensions. So if you already know the dimensions and you, you're just trying to find components of forces, you don't need to find the angles. Save yourself some time. So let's see then. Now, uh, that's for part A. Then for part B, let me do the sum of forces in the x direction. Okay, well, each of these forces is going to have an x component. So, but first, let me just go ahead and say I have a cx, uh, cx plus uh, t times 12 over 13 plus t times 4 over 5 equals 0. And so Cx is then equal to negative t times some coefficient, which I'll calculate. 
12 over 13 plus 4 over 5 um, times 1.72 or 1.723, which is equal to negative 130 times um, 1.723. Which comes to, oh, negative 224 newtons. Or I could also say CX equals 224 newtons to the left. Like so. Part C. FY is going to be equal to uh, CY minus 120, not just these, not, I'm just going to uh, have these y components again, plus t times 5 over 13, plus t times 3 over 5, equals 0. So cy is going to be equal to 120 plus 130 times, oh actually not plus minus, sorry. That's a minus. 130 minus uh, 5 over 13 um, plus 3 over 5. Um, 0 0.985. And that all comes to 0.985. Exactly negative 8 newtons. Or I could simply say that CY equals 8 newtons downward. Like so. Questions on that? So you chose CY to be that. That's why you Yes, exactly. Um, that's why I like choosing. That's why I like. Uh, the question was so. It's negative. That's that's why cy is you chose upward. That's why cy is downward with the negative. Yes, and see, I that's that's why I see I like to choose methods that require zero thought because I'm lazy, incredibly lazy. And see, what I like to do is I like to just say, you know what? I'm not even gonna bother looking at a problem. I'm not gonna try to eyeball it and go, oh, which way is this gonna go? Is this gonna go to the left or to the right? I'm too lazy for that. So I'm just going to say all reactions are to the right and upward. And then um, if I get a negative number, it's going the other direction. Simple as that. It's more foolproof. So, and as you've seen, I, I make mistakes to error as human. So anyway, yes. So are you more, like, I guess a question that goes in reserve, are you more accepting of the negative values or do you prefer a direction? Whatever you prefer. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I think this is kind of a similar idea. I don't know, let me see here. Although I might work through this one. There's time, yeah, there's time. Okay. So determine the reactions at A and C when alpha is 45 degrees. So, let me turn this into a free body diagram. I'm going to have CX and CY, and then I'm going to have AY. Even though, notice, as this is drawn, this is actually kind of impossible, but that's okay. Um, anyway, so this is 45 degrees, so we get to be extra lazy, and just say, oh, this is just, I just have components here, 300 times root 2 over 2, right? And 300 root 2 over 2. That's just the cosine and the sine of 45 degrees. They're, of course, equal. 300 root 2 over 2. Okay. Next, let me just do a... I'll just go ahead and knock out the CX. Sum of forces in the X direction is going to be equal to Cx plus 300 newtons times root 2 over 2, which is going to lead to Cx is negative 300 root 2 over 2, which will come to 
which will come to negative 212.1, negative 212.1 newtons. So we now have Cx. Then I can say the sum of forces in the y direction is going to be, oh, no, actually, no, I don't want to do that yet. I don't want to do that yet because that would give me two unknowns, and that would not make me happy. Instead, I'm going to do a sum of moments. Oh, hmm, which do I want to do? You know what? I don't want to mess with that, this thing here. So I'm just going to do a sum of moments about B. Why not? Just for fun. Um, wow, never mind, sorry. I'm exception. That, that, that was not good. Let's do, yeah, that would be two nuns as well. So let's not do that. Some of the moments about, okay, fine, we'll do C. So this will give me then negative AY. It's going to be a clockwise rotation, so, so a negative moment, times a distance of 0.15 meters here. Then, um... Let's see, I'm going to have an X and a Y component for this one, and I, need to, and I need to consider the moments for both of them. So the X component now, if this is going to generate a negative moment about point C, so minus 300 root 2 over 2 times 0 0.3 meters. And the Y component will also generate a negative moment. So minus 300, again times root 2 over 2, and this times a perpendicular distance of 0.25 meters. And all of that equals 0. Uh, times square root of 2 over 2 times 0.3. Uh, so now I'll have, let me just work through this in pieces, negative AY times 0.15 minus 63.64 minus mm, minus 53.03 and then finally uh, let's see actually um, negative 0.15 ay equals so this is just a series of steps Uh, equals 116.7 and this will lead to AY is equal to negative um, negative 777.8 newtons or um, I could also say AY equals 777 0.8 newtons downward. And that's one of our answers. Questions on that? It's just another balance of moments, very similar to previous problems. So then, sum of forces in the y direction is going to be cy um, minus the ay, which is minus 777.8 newtons minus 300 root 2 over 2 equals 0 and finally cy is just going to be equal to plus 300 times root 2 over 2 which is equal to 989.95 newtons or I would just say probably 990 newtons at that point and that's cy and now we have the reactions uh, X and Y at C and the Y reaction at A. And that is the final answer. Questions on that? I know it can be pretty tedious at times, but ultimately it's not too bad. I hope so. It's all about breaking things into components, working with perpendicular distances, etc. Just 
there is a certain amount of ex that is one, the issue. Yes, there the in principle the stuff is very simple, but there is a certain amount of experience that come that, that there's a certain amount of um, experience you just need to get with practicing it. This is one of those things like it's kind of like you know um, you know I can teach someone the principles of integrals in a day, but to actually be really good at it takes a lot of practice, right? Problem 4.103. Hmm. Hmm. The rectangular plate shown weighs 800 or weighs 80 pounds and is supported by three vertical wires. Determine the tension in each wire. Well, I need to add one force. I'm going to show some forces on here. So um, I'm going to have just, let's just call this, I'm going to call this TC for it perhaps, TA. Now thankfully they're going straight upwards. That's going to help, help us a little bit. TA and TB. So T A T C and T B. We'll need to use a chest X-ray to figure out this one. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really, it's a really bad joke. Okay, uh, no, let the record show that there were no laughs at all. Um, <laughs> okay, anyway, um, you're like, fatal diseases is funny. Yes, uh huh. Okay. Um, anyway, okay. So what we're gonna do is. Uh, we could try summing forces in the vertical direction, but that's going to give us three unknowns. So that's not going to help us. I could try summing forces in the horizontal or the z direction, the, the x or the z direction, but that's not going to help us either. Uh, however, actually, I do know here that there is also going to be one other force, and that is an 80-pound force right at the center of this thing. Eighty pounds. Pound sign pounds. Okay. So check this out. Now let's see if you can follow along with this nonsense. I'm going to do, I think I see a path forward for this. I'm going to try, hey, let's do this. Let's do the sum of moments. The sum of moments uh, about B. But now I need to now I need to actually express an axis in the z direction. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to sum moments about b, but what I mean by sorry about point b in the z direction. What I really mean by that is about the z axis. So I'm rotating about this axis here, and I'm going to define whether they're positive or negative based upon the right hand rule on that axis. So, notice these two points, A and B, these two forces pass right through the z-axis, so they won't generate a moment about that axis at point B. Hmm. Kind of interesting. Sound good? They will not generate any moment. Again, forces A and B, tension A and tension B, will not generate any moment about the z-axis if I take moments about point B because they pass right through the axis. Okay. Now, if I took moments about C, they would, but um, anyway, the, but the axis passes right through the, the points that we're looking at. So anyway, cause, so what we're doing is, if I say I'm going to take the sum of moments about C in the z-axis, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to basically going to strike a line, a z-axis passing through that point. So it's not the same z-axis anymore, it's a different z-axis. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. We're considering things about the z-axis, a line perpendicular to the z-axis that passes through that point, essentially. We're considering forces rotating about an axis, parallel, about an axis parallel to the z-axis passing through our chosen point. Okay, so let's just show how this works. This one, 
the moment arm is zero. This one, the moment arm is zero. The 80 pounds is going to have a moment arm length of 30 inches. However, we need to figure out whether it's going to be positive or negative. If I strike a, if I use a the right-hand rule about the z-axis, I can see this is actually going the opposite direction of the right-hand rule. So that's going to be a negative um, 30 inches times 80 pounds. Yeah, exactly. But on the other side, it's going to go out of the page. It's basically, that circle is coming out of the page, out of the board here. Uh, 80 pounds. And then this one is going to be positive, plus TC times a moment arm length of 60 inches. Equals 0. And then um, I'm just going to divide by 30 and say negative 80 plus TC um, times 2 equals 0. So therefore, TC must be equal to 40 pounds. So I have one of these things out of the way. Yes? So you're, you're using that clever trick to turn weight plus quantity. Um, that clever trick, you mean components, vertical components and things like that? Yeah, exactly. Now we could actually, yes, we could actually do the whole, um, the whole full vector form and do all of that. We could, but I try to avoid that if I can. So, and, and if we're very clever, we can avoid doing that. Uh, well, actually, the reason, the main reason we can do that is because this doesn't have components, and so, but even if it did have components, we could just break them down into their x, y, z components. That would work just as well. But if it did, if, but if they weren't nice and orthogonal like this, I might be tempted just to use the full vectors because sometimes that's that's better than that's um, easier than working through the whole all those component uh, methods. Okay, so now let's see. I need to find something I can sum about some place I can sum moments about to get one of these two. Um, so let's see, what can I do? I don't want to do a z, but you know what? I'm gonna do. Um, hmm. Maybe I'll do moments about B again. Oh, well, I already used B. Uh, nah, why not? Let's use B again. Some of moments about B about the x axis. So, about the x axis. So now I have an axis that's kind of like this that I'm going to sum moments about. So um, the distance is basically going to be the distance between the, um, the z distance between these points and this uh, x coordinate, this x, this x axis. So remember, this is 15 inches from here to here. So I'm going to have, um, okay, if I apply the right hand rule again, um, TC, it looks to me like that's going to be negative. If, if I have a, a vector, my thumb pointing like this, uh, this one will be downward, all of these other ones will be uh, the right-hand rule. If I point my thumb toward the x-axis, my fingers will be pointing downward here. So then um, these will be, um, this will be positive, all of these, will, all the actual tensions will be negative. So negative TC times a moment arm length of 15 inches. Where did I get that? I'll show you. This is not from this. It's not just from the, this 15 inches. It's actually 30 inches minus 15 inches. 30 inches minus 15 inches, and then um, plus 80 pounds times a moment arm length of. Well, this is at 30 here from the edge. Um, actually, wait a minute. Did I? No, we're good. We're good. We're good. Um, times a moment arm length of, huh? Thirty, thirty inches as well, right? Thirty inches, yeah, thirty inches. Oh wait, no, that's not right. No. Oh no, it's a half of it's a half of sixty. No, oh sorry, that's actually wrong. It's going to be half of. Let's see, the entire plate is 75 inches, it's actually 80 inches long, right? Oh, sorry, 90 inches long. 
So 90 minus 15, no, sorry, not, let me just write it out. Forget this. Let me just write it out. Ninety over two minus fifteen. So that actually, that is thirty, isn't it? I, hey, I got it right by dumb luck, uh, the first time. Uh, time. So that's the eighty. And then that's look. That looks to me like minus T A times a distance of sixty inches, and that equals zero. Over TC here is 40 pounds. So we basically have 40 times 15. Okay, so this becomes plus 240 minus TA times 60. Um, and I'm just going to throw this in my calculator equals zero. I'm just going to solve this really quickly. Um, 40 times 15 uh, plus 240 over 60 and TA is equal to 14 pounds. TA is equal to 14 pounds. And then finally, I can simply say the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to TA plus TB plus TC minus 80 equals zero. So TB equals 80 minus 14 minus 40 and TA will be equal to 40 and then 26, right? 26 pounds. And that's it. So questions on that. I know that was the 3D problems take a bit to really wrap your head around. So you might have to stare at this problem for a while, look at some of the examples in the book, really try to look at this and work at it until you can kind of figure it out. I know this is kind of tricky. So um, anyway, but go home, read through this, work on, look at your notes. You can check on the, um, you, this will be posted online so you can look at this again if that's, if that's helpful. And that should do it. So um, again, let's see, I should have your exams for you by Monday, um, hopefully. Um, the We'll have more lecture on next week. Do we have any, when's the exam next week? That's, uh, huh? Is it the week after? Okay. All right. That's fine. We'll, we'll, I'll check up on that. Okay. I'll check up on that. We'll see. Um, anyway, and then, um, so that'll work. Uh, do that check, take a crack at those homework problems that are on the board earlier. Uh, I'll see you on Mondays. Don't study too hard over the weekend, but please study some. Uh, make sure you're up to speed on this. Uh, that'll do it. I'll see you on Monday. And as always, thank you. I thought it was 40.